sicknesses, infirmities in their bodies. We know that you are the great physician, that you are doctor of all doctors, a doctor the patient always get well, a doctor who never lost a case. All healing power is in your hand, saving power, redeeming power, and you can do all things, Father, except fail. That's why we got our tr trust in you. We looking to you. We depending on you, Father, from which all our help and all our strength come from. It comes from the Lord. And Father, if it's your will, we ask that you would touch and heal. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our pastor is coming. Good evening to you. Amen. We thank the Lord for your being here and we thank God for allowing us to be alive and to know it. <laughs> There's a difference in, when you don't know. <laughs> but we are alive and we know it and we thank God for that as we are preparing for another lesson. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, how we thank you and bless you for this day and for all that you've done for us. Your grace has been sufficient. Your mercy has been enough. And we bless you for that. Now, as we embark upon this lesson, Father, won't you send the true teacher? Because if he does not come, I should just take my seat. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every grateful heart say amen. Amen. We are thankful again tonight for our time of sharing together. And we bless the Lord for, we bless him because he's blessed us. Amen. Let me just put it that way. And um, he's, he's just, he just keeps on doing great things for us. And if you were raised in a sense like I was, whenever somebody, do something good for, for you, you ought to tell them thank you. And so God has done great things for us. And we, that's right, we say thank you. We say thank you. We are still on our topical study, our general study of the components of the church. And did you all bring your outline back? You brought it, wonderful. So we know we finished the first part of that outline on last week and we will embark to complete the last part of that outline. But uh, Brother Nick, I think it's time for a pop quiz. Yeah. A pop quiz. <laughs> I didn't get no amens on. Well, where are the amens on that? And to those of you who are worshiping with us online, we bless you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for your attendance also. And so, for those of you who have your outline, is there anyone who don't have one? Okay, there. Are they at the back, Brother Fees? Okay, if you don't have one, they are at the back. And so um, you're welcome to get one. And I'll help fill in the blanks along with our church. We'll help fill in the blanks from where we were on last week. Help fill in those blanks also, okay? And so if you don't have one, um, I have an extra one right here. You want to take that one, Dick? Dick Dixon, take that one. All right, no worries. And we'll we'll get with excuse me, we'll get with where we left off. But I'll also fill in those blanks for those brother Lester who were not here on last week. So we are talking about miracles, miracles, and. We have a working definition of miracles, and I'll give you a little bit more. So you may have to write on the back of your page, too, because as you study, you know, one of the things about the Word of God, <coughs> excuse me, one of the things about the Word of God is you can study and study and study the Word of God and get all of the juice out the Word of God, and then the peeling still tastes good. 
Isn't that right? Amen. You could have read the 23rd Psalm all your life. And happy belated birthday, Sister Deanne. You could have read the 23rd Psalm all your life and read it again, and it says something all more revealing to you. It, that, that's just God's word. I don't care how much you indulge in it, you never get to the end result of it. And so I say that to say I was setting y'all up because I need to give y'all some more information about miracles that I didn't give you all, Sister Joyce, on last week, missed you on Sunday. All right, so we want to give you all these information. The first thing is, do, does anybody remember how many types of miracles there are? There are five types of miracles. Wonderful, five types of miracles. Now, y'all said that convincingly. You said it so convincingly, I just know y'all know what they are. What are they? Creation miracles, sustaining miracles, providential miracles, predictive miracles, and suspension miracles. Very good. So y'all, y'all, y'all done made y'all triple A for the day. Y'all done passed the test. I was going to tell God on y'all. All right. So, yeah, you have all these five types of miracles. And the, with these five types of miracles, believe it or not, in the life of Jesus, he performed all five types. In the life of Jesus, he performed all five types of those miracles. Good evening, Deacon Willis. He, he performed all types of those miracles. In addition to that, in addition to that, Every book in the Bible, how many books are in the Bible? 66. Every book in the Bible has a miracle in that book, at least one. Every book in the Bible has at least one miracle in that book. And if you don't see it, you wasn't reading quite, uh, uh, carefully enough. Okay? Every, every book in the Bible has at least one miracle. Now, based off of that, in the life of Jesus, there has been a debate saying how many miracles did he perform? Most people say he performed 37. Okay? Most people, most theologians, Bible scholars say he performed 37. I want to submit to you that there were 40 that surrounded his life, though. Now, what do you mean by that, uh, Pastor Bolton? He actively performed 37 miracles, but there were 40, Sister Pamela, there were 40 that actually surrounded his life or that he had something to do with. Now, here's where we clarify that statement, okay? Here's where we clarify that statement. What do we believe to be the first miracle surrounding Jesus' life. Good evening, Crystal Harris, Sister Darlene, Mary, Uncle Roosevelt, good evening to all of you. What do we believe to be the first miracle? And those of you who are online, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can chime in also. Who know what the first miracle surrounding Jesus' life was or that we believe to be the first miracle? Anybody know? When Jesus turned water into wine. That was his first, what we call, and we can, can I move around now, Jay Wall? Okay, thank you. Uh, Y'all can't keep me in that little space up there. I got to move, you understand? I got a belly to lose. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so the first act of miracle in the life of Jesus was indeed him turning water into wine. That was his, and, and what, did, what did I call it? An active miracle. But we also have a category that's not just active miracles, they're called passive miracles. Active miracles is what you use energy to do. Passive miracles is what you did not use energy to do. So if we are to say the first active miracle was indeed Jesus turning water into wine, that is true. But that's not the first miracle surrounding him. Anybody know what the first miracle surrounding him was? When he was born. Right, that's right. The virgin birth, when he 
was born, and Deacon Arnold said something. I gave you all this word before. I'll give it to you again. The Greek word is called kenosis. Kenosis. K-E-N-O-S-I-S. Kenosis. Y'all got that? K-E-N-O-S-I-S. Kenosis means when God, Jesus, voluntarily emptied his deity to become a human. How did he do it? Voluntarily. He gave up in what we would consider, if you want to put it that way, he gave up his godship to become human. And so that's why the scripture says he's not a man that he can't be touched with and, and with our infirmities. He knows what it feels like to feel what we feel like. That you got that? He knows what it feels like to be hurt, for his feelings to be hurt, for people to turn on him. He knows what it feels like because he was the, the, the other Hebrew word is El Gabor. He was the God man. Now, don't write that down because I got to preach on that one day, okay? No, and I don't want y'all to be ahead of my, I don't want y'all to give me amens too soon. That means he's, he was the God man. Uh, uh, Deacon Dixon would teach that he was 100% God and 100% man. It wasn't no 50-50 there. No 50-50. You got it? So the first miracle surrounding his life was his birth. The other two miracles that are passive miracles was his resurrection. That's a passive miracle. He was involved in that. His what? Resurrection. And what's the third miracle in Bible then? His ascension. His ascension. And when you ascend, gravity presses down on you. Gravity presses down on you. It's a constant call, 9.8. It presses down on you, and that's how we get what we call our weight. So your weight is how much of you times how much gravity is pushing down on you. Now, gravity pushes down. That's why we're not floating in the air. That's what we call a law of gravity, right? right. You don't sit up. What do you do sit? Down, because gravity is... Now, when they sit up, they're just telling you to press up your body. But you, well, hey, folks ain't floating around here. If you all came in here and folks were just floating, floating around this church, you would get back in your car <laughs> and be gone. You understand? So gravity is always pushing down. But Jesus defied the laws of gravity when he ascended, went up. Y'all hear me? And he's always doing that in Scripture. He's defined what man defined. He said, you, you, y I, y y'all can't tell me how much God I can be. When he rose from the dead. You see what I mean? He defied the laws of death. That's why he had to be in the grave three days. Because the Jews didn't give up their, 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 their dead folks until after day two. And you see him doing this in miracles. He healed Peter in law, Peter's mother in law. She was sick. He came back and healed a girl who had just died. And they was like, no, nah, she was just asleep. Because the Jewish law said they had to be dead at least three days. He came back and healed a man who was being taken to the tomb. And the people said, no, nah, he was just comatose. He, he, he just fell out for a little while. So Jesus said, you didn't believe when I healed the girl who had just died. You didn't believe when I healed the man and brought him back to life after he was going to the grave. Now I got something for you. I'm going to let Lazarus stay there. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you see that? And to the point that he's now stinking. And I'm going to show you a miracle since you didn't believe the other ones. And see, that's the kind of God I love. You see what I'm talking about? You can't be God Godin. I made that word up, but still. He's a God of miracles. And he does these miracles without your permission. I know that's right. Amen. He didn't ask you whether he gonna, 
Uh, Sister Linda, uh, you need a miracle. No. The fact he woke you up this morning. When you were asleep, and there's medical people here who know this, when you were asleep, you was as close to death as you would ever get to death before dying. Your body shut down. But that old song, that old saint says what? He touched me with a finger of love, and my eyes came open. You hear me talking in here? And so he still, now this is the, this the blessed part, he's still a God of miracles. Can I, y'all know I got a little bit of education, but I need to mess this grandma up, okay? He ain't ran out of miracles to perform. We can go home on that one. Yes, sir. Komodo dragons. And how long were they there? 40 days, huh? And, and think about that. In scripture, there's always a, a significance to numbers. Now, I don't have time to stay on it, but 40 days, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Y'all hear me talking? There's a significance to it. When God, and this is, this is going to be on my notes a little bit later on, but I'm going to say it right now. One of the, there's five criteria to something being a miracle. One of them is you can't explain it if you tried. And there's some intelligent peoples up in her. But you can't explain it if you tried. And you've seen people try to actually, there was a pastor in Nigeria, he, tr he said he was going to be like Jesus and fast 40 days. He ain't around no more. Because God ain't going to share his glory with nobody. He ain't. But when he chooses to keep you for 40 days, only he can do that. And he can keep you how? In perfect peace. As long as your mind is stayed on him. Yeah, he can do that because he's a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. So one of the first things I told you, in order for it to be a miracle, you can't explain it. The second criteria for it to be a miracle is this. You have to see it. Not before it happens, but after it has manifested itself. Because you can't, it cannot be defined as a miracle if you see how it's going to happen. It has to be observable. You have to be able to see it after it has happened. If I don't have no arm and God performs a miracle and I get an arm, you should be able to see the arm that I got. That's one of the differences between a healing and a miracle. A miracle, you can see it. If God healed your esophagus, I can't see that. So miracles have to be observable. That's why Jesus, somebody get me Acts. Somebody get Acts. Uh, just go there right quick. 2, 2, 2, 2. Acts, Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 22. First person, get it, read it loud. Acts 2, 2, 2. That's in the New Testament. If you're in the Old Testament, I'm telling. If you're in the Old Testament, you need to be at Sunday school tomorrow. <laughs> you got it? Somebody got it? Read it. Read it loud. Read it loud. And certainly, what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and what else to say on it? What's up? And that's Acts 2, 2, 2? 
Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Go to verse 22 now. Because it starts off, and behold, there became a rushing mighty wind. They saw that. And it says immediately it happened. There was no weather forecast to predict it. It didn't say, and the, the thunder hit, and then the lightning came. It says, and suddenly something happened that you can what? See. Now go to verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, man attested, man attested Saul, by God, that he was what? By God to you. Mm -hmm. By miracles. By what? Miracles. miracles. Mm -hmm. What else? Wonders. Wonders. What else? And signs. and signs. They physically what? Saw it. Even after Jesus came back from his resurrection, it says what? Over 500 people witnessed him. They saw him. So you have to be able to see it in order for it to be a miracle. So first, you can't explain it. Secondly, what? You have to be able to see it. Number three, it has to be extraordinary. Now, if I clip my fingernail, if I go to the pet manicure, Sister Clive, if I go to the manicure, and I mistakenly, the, the, the person make a mistake and clip my finger too close. And I said, oh my goodness, I ain't got no fingernail. They done clipped it too close. And they come back next week. That was supposed to happen. It's a fingernail. But God forbid if I go there and I lose my finger. You hear me talking? I lose the whole finger, the whole hand. And that return, I'm up here preaching and I got a snub up here like this here. And I'm up there preaching and it come back. Don't leave. <laughs> this is not before all. Don't leave. You see what I'm saying? That's a miracle. That's not ordinary. It's ordinary for your fingernail to grow back. It's extraordinary for a whole hand to grow back. Do y'all hear what's going on around here? That's, that's, that's in the category of a miracle. Number four is it has to be directed by God. Do y'all not know, believe it or not, that there are mediums and witches and warlocks that can do magic and people interpret that as a miracle? And anything that a witch or a warlock can do is simply mimicking what God has already done. Amen. Did y'all know that? Read the scripture. When the staff became a snake and all of those things, God did it first. And the devil got a habit of just trying to mimic God. That's why you got to be careful of wolves in sheep's clothing. Everything that happens that appears to be God is not. For many will say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, who you will. Which who did? God did. God did. Through him. Yes. In your midst. In your midst. In order for you to see it. See, this ain't no hearsay. This is not hearsay. This is I see. Not hearsay. Oh, they said this, they said this. Well, who is they? You don't have to ask that question. You physically see it. All right? It's directed by who? God. And so that's why. Let me, I wrote something on here, and, and I got to read it to y'all because I worked so long on getting it right that I want to make sure that I say it correctly. So bear with me, all right? Uh, here it is on my paper. The purpose of miracles is not to give you faith, but to build your faith. I worked on that for like 15 minutes. I hope y'all let me say that. You hear that? The purpose of miracles is not to give you faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the 
word of God. You see what I'm saying? Because people can, easy, people can trick you into what you're seeing if you don't have the faith to believe it before it happens. Most of the miracle ministries of yesteryear have phased out. Did y'all know that? I'm not being funny, but and these, are, these were real ministries too, like Oral Roberts, uh, A.A. Allen. All of these, men, they didn't continue because there was nobody after them to come and continue in the word. When nothing else is going to be, heaven and earth going to pass away, but it's his word that's going to stand. So when I come to you and I teach about miracles, I am, excuse me, introducing something that will help build your faith. Because the average person can dance and run around the church, and when they sit down, they have no idea who they're running around for. Because it ain't how, how you jump on Sunday, it's how you walk on Monday. Did y'all hear me what I'm talking about up in here? It's your life. Anybody can shout. But can you live by the Spirit of God? You could you ask the average person, how was church? Like, oh, we had a time. What the preacher talk about? I forgot, but we had a time. But that's why I give you all visuals and handouts. So you can go back and study to what? Show thyself approved. You cannot convince an unsaved person that God is real by shouting. Come on. But you can by living by the word. But in order to live by the word, Sister Brooks, you got to know the word. And you got to study it. And don't always take what your pastor say. That's why I'm looking at y'all with y'all Bibles. Because folks in an average church have more confidence in what their pastor say than what God said. Y'all don't believe me? Talk about your, get, find somebody talking about your pastor. Hey, what I'm, am I lying what I'm saying? If folks will fight over their pastor. Are you fighting over the word though? Well, my pastor said, but what did God say? That's why when I give you all this information, it's scripture to back it up. It ain't my lip, it's his script. You hear me talking? Did I give y'all the last one yet? The last one is for miracles, the category for the miracles is it's usually understood to have some kind of symbolic or sign value. There's a reason that it happened. That's what that means. It's a reason that it happened. Why did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? What did the scripture say? For, for, so they can believe. It's really to help them to believe. Because a lot of stuff was going on. He also did it for the benefit of those who were standing around. When the Bible said Jesus wept, there's many schools of thoughts on why he wept. One is Lazarus was his friend and he was dying. He did. And this is Jesus' humanity. The other one, he says, is for the benefit of those who are around who had no belief. Do you know that some people have to see a sign in order to believe? It shouldn't be that way. But they have to see a sign. But here's why, where we get in trouble. Sometimes that sign is you. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes you become the only Bible some people will ever read. And some folks won't come to church because some folks in the church never act like they knew the church. There's a sad reality, but it's true. So we have these miracles, and I pray that God will work miracles in all of y'all lives. Not so you could believe, but it builds your faith. It really does. 
It really does build your faith. But the basis of your faith is the word. Y'all got that? Miracles build faith. But the basis of your faith is the word. And God is dependable. And you can rely on his word. Okay? You can rely on his word. All right? So, for those of you who were not here last week, let me briefly go through the first part, and then we're going to go to the second part, and I'm going to bid you fair good evening. All right? So, the first part is, number one, miracles require what? Faith. Faith. Very good. Miracles require faith. Faith. Letter A, in scripture, miracles are listed after teachings. Miracles are listed after teachings. The function of teaching is more about edifying, right? But, the func- but, but miracles, it, it's not as extravagant as miracles are for some people. Now, somebody like me, I would like to see a miracle, but I love to hear good teaching, good biblical teaching. You can't beat good biblical teaching. I'm telling you the gospel truth. You just can't beat it. I mean, you, when, when the folks about to stop, you just want them to keep going. And right, and that's another thing about a miracle. A miracle is instantaneous. It's, it happens, and uh, okay, what's next? But the word of God, ooh-wee, I ain't nothing like the word of God. I'm trying to tell y'all something up in chat. Let it be a miracle is an act you cannot explain because it goes against what's normal. So that's the for those of you who weren't here, we're just filling in the blanks. It goes beyond a normal act because you cannot explain it. Okay, I told you what the physicist told me. When I can't explain it, it must be God. And that man is brilliant. He had like a 180 IQ. Letter C said what? The next one is miracles normally happen when instantly and are what? Visible. You can actually see it. When Jesus turned water into wine, they saw that and some of them tasted. it. It just wasn't no see. They wanted to taste. All right. I should have got an amen from all, all my wine drinkers. Wait a minute. I'm hearing some amens over here. Now, what's going on? I mean, the, 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 the saints over here said amen louder than anybody. What's going on around chair? <laughs> Y'all heard what I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. All right. And guess what? So Jesus turned water into wine. And guess what? I like to say this as a joke. If somebody needed an aspirin, he could have turned that wine back to water. If he wanted to. All right. Next is what? Miracles normally happen instantly and they are visible. Um, it is a miracle that some of us are still alive. It's a miracle some of us still alive. Isn't that right? Yeah, I, I thank God for life. I thank God that I'm alive, that I can see and smell and feel and taste. I thank God for that. Many times as uh, we done been up to the hospital. I, I, I like my own bed, my own couch. I don't, you understand what I mean? And when you, when you get that perspective, it makes you more appreciative. Letter D, miracles are not bragging. Oh, they had that up there a few minutes ago. That's good. Miracles are not about bragging about your fortune. They're about building your faith. So you don't get a new car, somebody gave you a new car, and you go bragging about it. You should go thanking God for it, okay? Folks don't like folks who are arrogant and brag about everything. They don't want nothing to do with them. As Paul said, you do your boasting in the Lord, okay? Letter E, healings and miracles are in the family, our family members, but because both of them need to have what? Faith. You need to have faith for both of them to happen. I've seen miracles happen or I have observed or been in a company of miracles happening, happening, I should put it that way, and certain people didn't have faith, and that was it. 
I was I have been I have been praying for folks and people will whisper in my ear, I don't really believe this happening. What can I do with that? Dust and move on to the next one. I mean, I, I'm not mad. It's a sad reality. I'm not mad at him, but I have to just move on from it. OK. And so letter F, there are three types of faith that you can have. Number one is faith to live by. Number two is the fruit of faith. And number three is the gift of faith. OK, faith to live by the fruit of faith and the gift of faith. Those are the three general types of faith that we have. And you even have to have faith. You even have to have faith to believe that God's word is true. Because faith is the substance of things, what? The evidence of stuff you cannot, you can't see. And so that's why I often tell people, we got to walk by faith. When you don't, if, at offering time, if you don't have money, walk by faith like you do. Come on up here and touch it and say, in Jesus' name, I got the faith to believe that the next time offering come around, I'm going to have something to put in there. You hear me? And letter, letter G, generally, if you can see how something will happen, it's not a miracle. If you can see how it happened, it's not a miracle. I have a, 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 de- a good friend of mine. He was dead. I mean, gone. They had pronounced him. They had tagged his feet, zipped him in a body bag, and put him in a morgue. And he came back to life. Came back to life. Ma'am, so he had died. He had died of a drug overdose. Oh, generally, if you can see how it, how it happened, it's not faith. If you know how it's going to happen before it happens, that don't take faith. Just like if you know you, you cut your finger, if you know your fingernail going to grow back, that you, that, that's not a miracle. That's an ordinary event. Okay. But if your finger gone, I don't know how that's going to come back. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, 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 that's in the line of what? Miracles, because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things we cannot see. Letter two, miracles re- rebuke facts. Okay, miracles rebuke facts. The facts say that the diagnosis the doctor gave you and wrote on the report is, 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 is bad. That's what the facts say. But Isaiah 53 says... Whose report will we believe? We're going to always believe who? The report of the Lord. So your faith, miracles always go against facts. Always. Now, that don't mean that the facts got to be something bad. Some facts are good. It's a fact right now that I'm 46 years breathing and blinking. On my next birthday, is that going to be a fact? Because facts generally change. Does that make sense? I am 46. That's a fact. I was born in 1977. But this time next year, that fact is going to be out the window. But that's why the word of God is not based on fact. It's based on truth. Because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, I'm God. I change not. He's the same today that he was on yesterday and tomorrow He's going to be the same. So letter A, letter A, operating in these gifts. When you operating in the gifts that the Bible talks about, especially in this study, that will take this church and our lives to a new level. Something you've never seen before. It does not matter your age. God will show you some things you ain't never saw. He showed, you know what? Over the last year of your life, You've been at a level in God and study and worship that you hadn't been in your life over the last few months. Because God is building you and growing you through his word. All right. So letter I, the components of the church are meant to bring unity and power. Not envy and pettiness. (laughs) Unity and power, not envy and pettiness. What God gives you, thank God that he gave you that, stay in your lane and stir up your own gift. 
Do you hear me what I'm saying? You don't have time to worry about what nobody else is doing. It's enough time in a day to worry about yourself and what God has given you to do. Because he's given you to do that nobody else is going to do it but you. That's why he created you to come here. You hear me talking? All right. So let it be. There are a few differences between healing and miracles. And next week, I think we hit, I think we hit healings on next week. But uh, there are a few differences be- between the two. All right. The first thing that we see as a difference is what? The idea of healing means you had to be sick. You don't need to be healed from something if you're not sick of it. You hit right? You have to be sick in order to be healed. If you're already well, you don't need to be healed. Now, for a miracle number two, miracles go beyond healings, although healing is a type of miracle. You, you with me? Because if, if you're healed, if, if you got a diagnosis and they say you have a brain tumor, you go the next day after we prayed for you and they, the brain tumor ain't there, that's a miracle. And guess what? You can see that. Why? Because before they take you to the brain surgery, they always do a scan. You got me what I mean? All right. Let us see. Jesus never called anything he did a miracle. The people called them miracle. Jesus was just doing what he was brought here to do. Yeah, that's what I came to do. We see it as a miracle because it goes beyond our understanding and comprehension. When Jesus walked on water, now y'all ain't going to believe that. He was supposed to do that. He was Jesus. But when the people saw it, because no man had walked on water before, it became a miracle. Okay? I'm rushing on, all right? So um, he was brought here to do letter D. Sometimes miracles demand that you do something that does not make sense because miracles don't make sense. Getting out the boat. Now, Jesus said, I mean, Peter said, can I walk? Jesus said, get out the boat. Peter's like, no, well, now, Jesus, now, that's water. That ain't sand. That, that's water. Now, to everybody else, it, it was silly. Now, you're going to try to get out this boat, Pete, and we in here. Right? But he had to do something crazy. Uh, Ezekiel, the Lord told him to go speak to some dry bones. Something silly. But when he spoke the word of the Lord, the miracle came to pass. So many times, don't you get mad at folks that say, so you going to that church again? Child, you don't know. I'm expecting a miracle. It don't make sense to you. And you can call me silly, but when I walk up in here with my miracle next week, y'all hear me talking? And just like with Naaman dipping down seven times in the Jordan River, Naaman dipped down seven times in the Jordan River when the rivers where he was from were far cleaner than the Jordan. The Jordan was called the Muddy River. And the prophet told him to dip down in mud in order to become clean. Only Jesus can do that. He could dip your black soul in his red blood and you come out white as snow. You hear me talking? So letter E, and we're done, giving thanks to God is key to miracles. Before you get your miracle, thank God like you already got it. Before he, got, he, he did anything with those two fish, them, what, them, 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 them two, what we have, the two catfish, and, and those four, those, those, those red lobster biscuits, before he did anything with that, what did he do? He gave thanks, and then he multiplied it. So if you're praying for something in your life, if you're asking God for a miracle, thank him first. And then watch the manifestation. And lastly, be careful not to simply follow apparent miracles. Submit to the Lord. Give thanks to him. Worship him with your whole heart. Then you will see those miracles happen in your life. Don't you try to go to the bank and get a deposit, a withdrawal when you ain't made no deposit. And out under there, yes, it's the feeding of the 5,000. Feeding of the 5,000. Mm-hmm. 
My time is up, and I appreciate y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. To those of you who are worshiping with us online, thank you so much. We actually went one minute over time. My apologies for that. If you are led to give an offering, I know that some people actually contact the church this week because they're watching us online and they wanted to give an offering. I shouldn't say it already, but we did. We have done a soft launch of our website, so we're building it. You may get email and, and, and messages about um, sending Sister Tasha content as we are building the website. And so it's a soft launch. Everything is not on there yet, but we want to make sure that the Bible study lessons are on there for people who want to study with us. And even people who may be coming to the area, they can Google a church in, Ithaca, uh, in Odessa, and this church will pop up. So that's why we're, we're giving us ourselves a better web presence for those, those types of things. A calendar, so many things will be on there. So Amen. pray as we continue to load that content and put pressure on somebody to uh, continue to load it because life is a lot. Life is a lot for just about all of us. But we want you all to be patient. It's a soft launch. It's stjamesodessa.org, stjamesodessa.org for those who want to go look at it now. And we'll be adding more and more and more. But thank you so much for your presence, for you who are online. Thank you for your presence and your gifts. So we thank you for your presence and your presence, all right? Your presence yourself and your presence your gifts. And to those of you in this awaiting congregation, God bless you all. We thank God for you all tonight. And we hope that you have learned something and that you will continue to